life. American poet and author Henry David Thoreau once said, many men go fishing all of their lives without knowing that it is not fish they are after. Got him. For Big John Adams, chasing his life's passion trumps chasing walleyes. It was one of them things where, you know, three, four years ago, Jane, Jane took a job, my wife here, and, and uh, she took a job at the school, and, you know, I was kind of panicked a little bit, wondering, you know, what am I going to do? And what Big John has gone and done is start a new career. At a certain age, you know, things are a little bit more of a challenge. There we go. Um, but I think, you know, I've always been in the customer service business. Um, I've always been around people. Um, it kind of comes natural for me. So naturally, at that certain age of 49, John gave up his nine to five in the hotel business and is now a first year fishing guide, a rookie, so to speak on Devil's Lake. We talked about it and you know he's like I really want to do this but I'm not sure what do you think and I just said you have to try it. It's it's so worthwhile if it works and and I mean it's how can you say no? I mean you can't. It's just he's he's a good guy. Hey, John. Originally hailing from western North Dakota, Big John's passion for learning Devil's Lake took a little time, patience, and a checkbook. You know I spent I would say anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars on guides. We'd come up here and he would use every guide service I think Devil's Lake had to find, to teach him how to fish the right way. And they would take me out and we'd catch fish and sometimes I would even go alone. Walleye, John. You got one there too? For this Adams family, there's hardly anything crazy or kooky about them. Your typical family led by the man they call Big John, fishing guide and family man. I think he's just finding his passion. It took him 49 years to find his passion and he found it and you have to go for it. It's something that I want to do and and it's no it's not a crisis it's just it's just a uh, uh, it's a passion. Who's the best fisherman you know? My dad. Big John says wheels or four hooves on the new Pemina Gorge Recreation Trail. Carved from rushing waters millions of years ago lies the Pemina Gorge, a natural North Dakota wonder shared with Canada that has recently given birth to a new opportunity for all to explore its splendor, the Pemina Gorge State Recreation Area. Well, there was a need in North Dakota um, for something for you know the ATVers to use. <laughs> So we kind of chose this as our premier location and really um, worked with the landowners. We had land here, and so we were able to kind of work it in and make it happen. First constructed in 2011, the trail is 24 miles and growing, twisting and turning through rugged oak forested hills, offering riders, whether on wheels or horseback, even mountain bikers, a chance to connect with nature. We've got a little bit of everything. Um, as far as plant life, we're kind of on the edge of a couple different zones here, so we get a lot of mix of, of you know, different things. Um, we've got a lot of wildlife, big game species. We've got elk, we've got some moose. Um, we've got a couple black bear running around the area, um, things like that. They're, they're kind of elusive. You don't see them too often, but they're here. Um, we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of birds. A lot of, you know, this is a good place for birders to come. The trail comes with a bit of controversy and has been met with some resistance from some locals, but it does appear that the doubters are slowly getting on board. They're coming around. There was uh, a few skeptics at the beginning, and uh, there, there's a few left, but they seem to be coming around. It gives us a chance to come out and ride our ATVs in a safe setting, and it's very family-oriented. Almost every weekend I see a couple more couples out of Wahala come out, and, and we've got a few people out of Pemina coming around now in Nitchy, so it's starting to pick up with the locals. Locals and those traveling to Walhalla to make the dusty trail their destination, providing a boost for the local economy. My in-laws came up last weekend and couldn't get a room at the hotel because there wasn't any. So right, and I don't know how many of those people were out riding, but there was a few. I seen a few of them out. Tell me about uh, your office. <laughs> this is it. Look around. It's beautiful. One of the paleontologists suggested last year that we hang a picture of a cubicle on a tree somewhere. Just. To for the irony. As far as views, I mean, it doesn't get much better than this in North Dakota. Well, the trail is not open to snowmobiles in the winter, but is open to snowshoeing 
and cross-country skiing. A lot of fun to be had. A large herd of deer is causing problems for the town of Hallock. So much, in fact, that the city leaders are planning, in conjunction with the Minnesota DNR, a special permit-only bow hunt this fall. The population may say 981. It's definitely a problem, you know. But every evening, it's the same old thing. My neighbor's mom called up. She's 92 years old. And uh, she said that she couldn't get this deer out of her bird feeder. Hundreds of deer, so many coming into the small town of Hallock, the residents are fighting back. And he pulled up in the yard and there was this 92-year-old mom standing out in the yard with a hammer and she's throwing it at the deer. <laughs> You'll see them crossing there's Highway 75. But... City leaders have come up with their own hammer, a plan to thin the herd in the form of a special limited bow hunt this fall. I think we're kicking around the idea of maybe 20 permits. It, again, we'll be deciding that within the next couple weeks. Noel says not everyone is buck wild about the idea of culling the herd and that the town residents seem to be split 50-50 on the idea. There are some that are thinking, are you kidding me? Are you serious? This, we're not, these aren't rabid skunks we're talking about. Oh yeah, I've seen a lot of nice big bucks in town, yeah. And then there are others that just think enough is enough. There isn't a time where you can't, you can't count 25, 30 deer in town. And they literally just run down the streets like like cattle and they'll run up into the berm or somebody's yard and they just stop and look at you. And way too comfortable. They, they probably uh, lived more on the rivers in some of the bigger yards, but they're in every single lot in town. You know, they don't, they're pretty comfortable. Comfortable eating every tree. I'm six foot four and they've eaten from six and a half feet down, just shredded it. Flower and shrub they see leaving nothing but a calling card in the morning. Well, look at it this way. Uh, you've got free lawn fertilizer now for the spring. There's some residents town that just, you know, spend a lot of money in their flowers, I mean, thousands of dollars. And then next thing you know, they come out and hear the buds off the, off the flowers, they're gone because the deer have ate them. It's gonna be tricky in this town because there's so little public land, you know, it's definitely gonna need to count on, on the, the private landowners in the area. Nothing is final, but Halleck leaders think 20 permits will be issued. Of that, they're hoping for a 50% success rate. So maybe weeding out about 10 deer. Yeah. Who is, who is eligible, actually, to go hunt the deer? Well, it's a DNR-sanctioned hunt, so it will be open to everyone. It's a special season. All the details will be announced by the DNR. The city is still trying to iron out the details. They're consulting with other cities like Warroad and Two Harbors who have had successful hunts like this in the past. So stay tuned. Well, that was a good story. Thank, Thank you. you. Many American Crystal Sugar.